Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to MVR. This was a crazy week for VR news with interesting new controller designs, the official launch of the Vive Flow, a new interesting standalone headset coming out of France and SideQuest making waves with a new round of investments. So without further ado, let's jump in. Despite providing a framework for VR hardware through the Windows Mixed Reality platform and making tremendous progress on AR technology, Microsoft has shown very little interest in advancing VR tech for quite some time now. But during a recent symposium, Microsoft showed off the impressive X-Rings controller prototype. The hardware showcased in the demo is still quite rough around the edges, but illustrates a unique and clever way to integrate traditional VR controls with both finger tracking and force feedback. A knuckles type hand strap ensures that you can completely open the palm of your hand without letting go of the controller, while a modular stack of motor powered rings enable the controller to change shape by independently adjusting the diameter of each ring from anywhere between 5.7 and 7.7 centimeters. Each of the pads that populate the rings also contain capacitive touch sensors, which not only determine finger positioning, but also grip force, which in turn lets users interact with virtual objects in the same way as the knuckle controllers, but then with the added feedback of actually feeling the object in the hand being warped. The controller being demonstrated in the video is still very much an early concept, so I wouldn't expect it to be released anytime soon, but it does show that there are still quite some ways in which we can improve the current VR controller design in years to come. Speaking of what's to come, in the past couple of weeks we got a lot of leaks regarding HTC's next big VR product, the HTC Vive Flow. In accordance with previous speculations, it looked like all of the earlier suggested features, such as pancake optics and a form factor closely resembling the Vive Proton prototype, were all going to come true. But now that the event has come and gone, let's take a look at what HTC actually ended up releasing, because there are a number of points that I'd like to discuss. The most noticeable feature to talk about is the Flow's design which indeed shows off an extremely small form factor, exactly matching the one in earlier leaks, which is entirely made possible through the use of the aforementioned pancake optics instead of the now standard Fresnel one. The standalone headset aims to be both compact and lightweight, something that it does extremely well considering it weighs just 189 grams, which is several times lighter than any other major VR headset on the market today. The fact that the Flow is foldable and can literally fit into a bottle means that it's extremely easy to bring along, which is great if you're on the go a lot and want to be able to easily show off some basic VR experiences or to be able to watch movies in something like big screen while zoning out the rest of the airplane as you relax. While the Flow does come equipped with onboard 6 off cameras, at the time of release it does not support hand tracking or come with a controller. Instead, the headset will pair with your phone through Bluetooth and will use that device to control experiences instead. And while I do think that this concept has potential for a media viewer type of device, it is worth noting that at the time of recording, if you own either an iPhone or an Android phone running an Exynos CPU, that you will not be able to pair these to the Flow. Which honestly makes me a little confused on what HTC's target audience is. A likely culprit behind this is the lack of Miracast support on iOS though. But with HTC coming out and saying that they plan on working to add support for other chips sets, as well as hand tracking in the future, I can't help but feeling like this was an extremely rushed launch for something which has the potential to be an extraordinarily outstanding product. And with the last couple of Vive consumer launches not being received all too well, I'm just left feeling like HTC shot themselves in the foot here. They have this extremely outstanding design, supporting incredible lightweight and portable properties, and then they release it before they finish all of the software features? Like what am I missing here? If you can think of a good reason why HTC couldn't delay this launch until it could properly support the device. I would really love to hear your reasoning in the comments down below. If you do happen to belong to the happy half of society that owns a compatible smartphone, then you can pre-order the device now at Vive.com for just $4.99 and you will also receive a free carrying case while the pre-order period lasts. Speaking of pre-orders, what's probably been one of the more anticipated possible competitors to the Quest 2 is a yet unreleased piece of hardware coming straight out of France. The French startup behind the headset, Lynx, finally launched their long-awaited Kickstarter campaign earlier this month. Managing to secure their funding goal for a mass production version in less than 24 hours, their Kickstarter campaign is well on its way to double that goal just a few days later. The standalone headset up for funding here is a redesigned version of their earlier business concept but is still capable of both VR and full color AR pass through. Coming in with a starting price of $4.99, there's a lot to unpack here. What's probably going to stand out is the extremely slim form factor of the device, which much like the Vive Flow is achieved by moving away from the traditional Fresnel lens design. Where the Flow 
Xiaomi the pivot to the much superior Pancake Optics, the Lynx chose yet another bespoke design of their own, called a four-fold catadioptric freeform prism. In terms of other hardware, the Lynx R1 runs on a Snapdragon XR2, the same chip found in the Quest, has 6GB of RAM and comes with 128GB of internal storage, which can be expanded using the included SD card slot. The display is a nice 1600x1600 at 90Hz per eye, but unfortunately is still just LCD. And what is probably good news for many users who have IBD ranges in the more extreme ends, the Lynx R1 supports IBD ranges between 56 and 72mm, with the option of moving both both lenses independently from each other in order to achieve the perfect fit. The primary control method of the headset is centered around the super precise ultra leap hand tracking. But if you want to use a more traditional style controller, these can be bought as an add-on for roughly $90. The add-ons are based on the 6 DOF IMU based Finch controllers, but through collaboration effort also make use of the Lynx built-in cameras to improve accuracy and are fully compatible with Steam VR. Speaking of compatibility, the company has made it a focal point of their campaign that they're not interested in invasive analytics stating, we're selling headsets, not your data, something they were prepared to back up by making their entire software platform open source in nature, meaning that the more tech-savvy consumers are free to tinker with the headset and integrate their own drivers in whichever way they please. Since the headset itself is XR2-based, Lynx has decided to collaborate with SideQuest in order to provide app distribution functionality, but it says that anyone is free to sideload apps or bring an app store of their own, which if you're a fan of free and open markets is always a good thing. What's also a good thing is that SideQuest has recently managed to gain a fresh $3 million in a seed round, which the creators say will be used to help developers publish their apps across multiple platforms through OpenXR integration. Founded by the Belfast-based team in 2019, SideQuest has over the years become the leading sideloading platform for Oculus Quest standalone headsets, and also de facto unofficial app store, which unlike its more tightly moderated cousin over at Facebook, highly encourages experimental experiences that will likely never make their way into the official distribution channel. If you already own an Oculus Quest device and have never heard about SideQuest or tried any of their experiences, I highly suggest you check out this video, which highlights just some of the amazing apps that you can find on there. That being said, what do you think of the upcoming Lynx headset? Given the choice, would you pick it over the purchase of a Quest 2? If not, what would it take for you to consider it a viable alternative? I'd really love to discuss your thoughts in the comments down below. Well, that's all of the VR updates for this week. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, and I will see you guys next time.